Hey guys, welcome back to your brand new series of writing code. I hope you guys are as, as excited as I am, because this time we're going to be using a Node.js and we're going to be building a backhand application um, in Node.js. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, first things first, you're going to have to set up a project. This is going to be an Express project, so we will be using Express Generator to do this. Uh, make sure you've installed it before, so just do npm install minus um, g and then Express hyphen generator. Um, if you're using Linux or if you're using Mac, make sure that you use sudo. Uh, but then again, if your permissions are kind of set up in a way that allows you to do it without sudo, then, then use that, I guess. <laughs> um, I've already got it installed, so I'll be using it here. Um, it's quite a simple um, way of using it. So we'll be using express uh, as, a, as a command. Uh, we'll say, uh, for my editing templates, uh, please use EJF engine. Uh, this is our view engine. We don't really care about it at the moment, which is why we're using EJS. Um, EJS is pretty good, to be honest, but uh, I personally don't care about it at the moment. And also for the entirety of this uh, project, because we are writing backhand APIs. We're not writing uh, any front-end code at the moment, so uh, just let it be with EJS. Right? Um, another reason why I'm using EJS is because if you want to use Angular in future, or if you, um, you want to do some, some cool stuff with Angular uh, with our backend, then uh, because Angular uses a similar templating engine like Handlebars, you can, um, if you use Handlebars, it, it'll be better. It'll, it's not impossible, but it'll be slightly uh, painful to kind of uh, go, go through that. You have to change the way Angular templates and all of that stuff. So um, just don't worry about it at the moment, just use EJS, right? Uh, now we're going to be choosing our project name. So this is going to be WC to do um, backend. Uh, right, so it's quite simple. Actually, let's call it uh, to do app hyphen backend uh, and then press enter, and that should create everything for us. Excellent. Uh, so it's created the folder for us and it's created all of the boilerplate inside the folder. Let's quickly go into the folder um, uh, and just do npm install to install all the dependencies. Um, and that should only take a couple of uh, seconds, I guess, depending on your network speed um, and how much of it is cached in your um, NPM private, uh, NPM local repository. Right, so that's done. Excellent, that was quick. So let's go back to IntelliJ and import the project. Uh, we will be importing inside the YouTube folder um, and inside the to-do app backend. We'll create the project from existing sources. Um, yeah, that looks good. That looks good too. Perfect. Excellent. So IntelliJ has imported the project. You can use any editor uh, for your project, but I quite like IntelliJ because it's amazing at everything it does. Um, also, I would highly recommend you try it out at least. So this is the IntelliJ Ultimate Edition. You can also use WebStorm as well, but um, I'm using IntelliJ Ultimate because I also do a lot of Java code and a lot of uh, Node code, a lot of um, different languages. So it's, it's just... It, this includes most stuff that you need, I think. And, it, and it's also got quite good support for um, um, for Android as well, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so it's a whole package. Um, right, so now that we've kind of set up our basic project, um, I personally don't like how Express sets everything up. Uh, so I'm going to be doing some changes, right, around our index.js uh, root and users. What, what the hell is users? I'm just going to I'm going to delete that uh, straight away. Um, from, and um, I'm going to be making some changes into that bin directory as well. We will be adding a new config uh, management type uh, module, which will allow us to manage our configuration across multiple environments. Uh, even though we're, we're not going to be using multiple environments right away, we'll, we'll just write it so that it's available for us. And um, yeah, so first things first, I'm going to rename uh, index.js to be index root .js with uppercase i and uppercase r, because you will know that in a minute. So uh, I'm going to first edit. Um, I'm going to first format the code. So uh, Control Alt L on on Windows will format your code. Um, and, and I'm going to be adding a new function around this. So uh, index root, and then um because we don't need require anymore, we we'll delete that. And then add this bit in here. This allows us to um, view all of our dependencies that this module has in one line, so you know that this module depends on Express. It will depend on I don't know, um, it will depend on Mongoose, whatever that you have. You just, you can just view it quite nicely in one line, and also it makes sure that all your dependencies are declared once inside AppJS, and then they all are kind of used here. 
So it's quite a nice uh, way of working. Uh, but you have to make sure that you return your router. If it's a root, you have to make sure they return the router at the end of it, because when the function gets executed, you want to return the router back to the caller of the function so that they can then attach the router to the main application, right? So quite simple. Uh, and then change that to be index root. Uh, and then perfect. Amazing, so that's sorted, that was quick and easy. Yeah, let's do the app.js as well. So first of all, we remove the users module, right? So let's delete that line, don't need that. And also the attachment of that line here as well, so delete that as well. Uh, change that to index root, because that's what it is now. Uh, and then change uh, var roots to be index root, just to re reflect what it actually is. And then copy that over to here. So this is perfect, we've now got an index root defined. Uh, and index root um, attached as well to the root of the application. So this index root could be used to serve your uh, your home page or your main application or whatever that you want to do with your index root. All of the other roots uh, from now on will be based on um, will be like API roots. So they won't be talking in HTML. They'll be talking in JSON, and it will kind of like make it much easier for us, right? Um, Right, so uh, another change is to change all of these vars to be constants. This is just a pedantic change that I do in all my applications because um, I quite like to be, for things that are constant, they should, st they should stay constant, right? So, yeah, that's just the principle. Uh, uh, let's format this code as well. So, Control-Alt-L to format the code. It's done some formatting, uh, not much because everything else is just a plain uh, flat structure. We're going to be uh, um, adding a new hierarchy to this by wrapping this around a function as well. So we're going to create a new function called app, uh, and it will accept a config in its uh, as its dependency. Because, oops, config, yep, and we'll close it at the end of it, right? Um, oops, um, perfect. Yes, indented itself, uh, and also as um, this is an app function, it should return the app at the end. So we'll return app here. Um, and module that exports it calls, and we'll export the function app. Perfect. Now, if you've ever looked at Express Generator, you'll know that the app.js is called by um, www. Um, so, we, so our next place of edit will be that. But prior to that, let's quickly uh, rename this thing to be app.js, and then go into uh, that one and then change that to be app. And then execute the function with uh, our requirement. So um, uh, config. Now config doesn't really exist yet, right? So let's declare it here. Um, equals require config. And I've just realized that I think I haven't um, passed the dependency in index root uh, from app.js. So let's do that here. This is our dependency express that we're passing in because that accepts express here. We're passing express here, and our app accepts config here, so we're passing config um, here. Yeah, perfect. So uh, let's change these things as well to be constant. Um, constant, uh, perfect. Um, and um, um, we haven't got the config uh, module installed, so let's install it quickly. So do npm install minus one save config. Easy command, really easy, really straightforward. Uh, and that installs config. So now that config is installed, uh, let me just quickly uh, reformat this code as well with Control Alt L. And that's reformatted my code again. Uh, now, the config isn't really there yet because we haven't defined it anywhere. So let's create on the project root new um, and go to directory, call it config. And inside config, let's create a new uh, file called default.json. This is perfect. So this is a JSON-based config, so we'll be adding our config here. Um, pretty simple, but we'll create a block called server, and anything inside this object will be a server-specific config, like a port number. So uh, let's call it 3000. Uh, save that. Uh, IntelliJ automatically saves things, so I don't have to explicitly save things. But if you're using a different um, editor than IntelliJ, you might have to uh, manually save things. Uh, so back to uh, app.js, uh, oh no, back to um, dub, dub, dub. Um, we will, because we, the port is now defining the config and not hard coded like this or in the environment, we will be removing this block and we'll say config.get 
server.port. Perfect. Um, and then, uh, now that we remove this function, we don't need it anymore, so let's remove it. Just delete that entire function and its comments, because um, that's absolutely a waste of space in our file, and why are we doing things that aren't being used? Right? So this is also one of the things that you, want, that you might want to keep an eye on, that uh, your application should only have code that it actually uses. So any unused code should be removed uh, straight away, because it's just a terrible practice right, to, to keep things. Uh, perfect. So now that we've got config, we've got app. Um, our app will not need the whole config, but it will need the something like the application section of the config, right? Um, but um, for now, let's not worry about it too much because our app is kind of the central to this whole thing. If it knows what ports it's on, it's not really a big deal for us, right? So um, perfect. Uh, let's try and run this application and see if it works. Um, basically, it's simple to npm start um, and it's worked hurrah uh, and we've defined in our config we've said port 3000 so let's hope that it's running on port 3000 um, so let's go here and uh, basically try and access our application so um, localhost 3000 um, should give us express hurrah this is perfect <laughs> uh, so we've got a basic project setup done I think in this um, in this video, we've got a, a basic uh, root with a function-based um, module structure. Um, um, and our www isn't really function-based, but this is the execution point, so that's just fine for it to be procedural. Um, our app.js is also function-based, so we've got config here. We're not really using config anyway, which is why it's, um, it's grayed out um, on my editor, but uh, we will be using it soon, so that will be uh, lighting up like everything else. Um, Right, so that's it for now, guys. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. In the next one, we'll be doing a bit more interesting. We'll be setting up a couple of routes and be seeing how things work. Um, so, um, yeah, till then. Bye.